And I want to talk to you about radical community. Actually, just the end of that word, radical unity. And guess what that word unity begins with? You. You. You, just look at your neighbor real nicely, smile at him and say, it begins with you. If you don't have a neighbor, just tell yourself, it begins with you. Unity, community, unity, community, radical unity begins with you. And we're going to talk about why unity is so important tonight. Pray with me as we dive into the word. Father, thank you for this very, very special moment. Thank you for, you're here. I know that you're here because we gather in your name and you're faithful to your, your word. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to touch every heart here. God, open our eyes, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive what you want to do uh, tonight in this area of a radical unity In Jesus' name, and everyone said, if you would, turn with me to 1 Peter 3, 8 through 11. I'm going to give you, I think, just a beautiful prescription of unity, prescription of unity. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 11. Smile at me when you get there. Getting some smiles. Some a bit cheesy, but that's okay. At least there's smiles. You ready? Finally, all of you should be one mind. Say that with me, one mind. I mean, think about that for a minute. Trying to get everybody in, on one mind. The power, you know, that, that instantly speaks to me of unity, one mind. Like right now, you can be sitting in here and your mind is at the beach or changing a tire or eating at the steakhouse. I don't know where your mind is. You can smile at me and be like, and you ain't here? One mind. It goes on to say, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. It's just, it's a beautiful picture of unity. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do and He will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and many happy days, here's a real key to unity. Unity in every area. Unity with husband and wife. Unity in family, children. Unity. If you want to to enjoy your life and see many happy days, how many of you want to enjoy your life and have Uh, See, happy days. Some of you want a bad life and you don't want a happy life. I don't don't get that when I ask a question in church. It's so strange for me. You want to enjoy life, right? You want happy days, right? It says, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Lies, you want to bring disunity just in a, in a minute, just in a minute. Lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. There is an enemy of unity. Now, granted, me and you can um, bring disunity into a situation just like that in a heartbeat. Just, just disunity. You can bring disunity with your attitude. But there is one who is an absolute opponent against unity, and his name is Satan. Say that with me, Satan. Satan. 
Satan is an opponent, uh, especially Satan, the archangel enemy of good, adversary, to withstand. He is an opponent against unity. I believe he sniffs out unity and he goes against it uh, because he knows the power of unity. He'll sniff it out. He'll sniff it out in your marriage. He'll sniff it out in your your business, in your family, in the church. So hard to keep people in a church unified. I mean, you just can't do it one person. We all got to be in it, in it to win it together. One mind moving together because the enemy, he is an opponent for, he's for something. What's he for? He's for disunity. He's for, let, let, let me show you the power of unity. Let, listen to this scripture. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, everyone say agree, agree. two of you. Wow. Then say 20, just, just two. If, 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 if two of you, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven, for where, look, two or three are gathered together. Say that with me, together. Listen to all the words that's unified. You can read through these scriptures and never catch the unity in the mix of them. Look what it says, gathered together in my name. I am there in the midst of them. I, I think you can gather, but are you gathered together? And if you're gathered Together, two or more of you together, then he is there. If you ask anything concerning anything, again, I say to you, if two of you agree, say that with me again, agree, agree. on earth concerning anything that they asked, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Agree together. Can someone say unity? unity. Psalms 133, turn there. This is famous scripture. There's a couple famous passages in the Bible about unity, just, just famous, the importance of unity, the importance of you having an attitude of unity, operating, walking in unity, praying for unity. Here, here's a, a, a powerful scripture on unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to, somebody say dwell. Just, just think about the, the unity words. To dwell, what? Together in unity. How, 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 how pleasant. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard. If you're in a, 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 a leadership position, if you're a parent, I'm going to tell you, it always starts at the top. The oil didn't run up his leg. It didn't run up his leg. It ran down his head, off of his beard. It's important as leaders, if you're a leader in any area, believe me, unity begins with you. It runs down you, off of you, on to others. Unity begins with you as a leader. It's very vital. It's like the precious oil on the head running down. Somebody say down. On the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. How many of you know that the devil can't stand you to be blessed? He commands a blessing where there's unity. If there's unity in your marriage, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be blessed. Are, are, are you with me tonight? If there's unity in your business, you're going to be blessed. If there's unity in the church, you're going to be blessed. You, he commands, pretty powerful. He commands. A, you want that commandment. He commands a blessing where there's unity. And look what else. Say that with me. Life. Life forevermore. The devil can't stand that. The devil opposes life. He, he has a simple agenda 
kill, steal, and destroy. He can't stand you to be blessed. He doesn't want the church to be blessed. He, he doesn't want a, a life-giving church. And what does he do? He opposes it. He does anything to tear it down. Look how powerful this is played out in the, I think the church is an Acts 2 church. Let's, let's just get that clear. If you want to see the New Testament church that we should be functioning and operating in today, it's Acts 2. Throughout the years, the church through growth and through man and, 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 and through all kinds of government, it, it's went all kinds of different ways. But if you want to get to the grassroots of the New Testament church, just, just, just Acts 2. It's powerful, the Acts 2 church. And look what takes place. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one. Oh, just, just turn there. You got to turn there. Acts 2 verse 1. You, you just got to see that. It, it's, 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 it's such a power. Landon, would you get up here on the keys? Would you crank his keys Who's on, my, who's on my sound? He going to cry. He going to cry. I need you to crank that, to crank those keys. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one. How many? One what? A chord. Can you just play a chord for me? A chord. No, you got to crank that thing, man. Just, just hit a chord. Just play it. Hit it again. Play it again. Can somebody say chord? Now play a jacked up no chord. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hit a chord again. No, hit a chord. Good, good, good. <laughs> now hit something jacked up. Yeah. Hit, hit a chord. Jack it up. <laughs> are, you, are you feeling the difference? Yeah. The church should be in one chord, not jacked up. If we're like that, we have a problem, Houston. If you're, hit, hit, a, hit a chord. You want your marriage like that. Hit a chord. You want your business like that. Hit, hit, a, hit a chord. You want your family like that. Hit a chord. You want your heart like that unified in serving him yes. hit, hit a chord you want your kids like that yes. come on hit a chord you want your school like that yes. hit a chord you want your future like that can somebody say a chord can someone say a chord can somebody say one accord now jack it all up jack it up again it's pretty simple to me isn't that pretty simple How many of you think that there is something powerful about unity? Yes. Hit, hit, hit a chord again. Wow. I can feel it. Yeah. Just play, 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 play a song. <laughs> Woo. How beautiful is that? Notes, chords, harmony. Come on, music. Isn't that beautiful? Now just jack it all up. I could just sit down. We could just go home now. Seriously. If you, if you don't get that tonight, the power of unity, can you put your hands together for Landon? <laughs> he, he didn't know I was going to ask him to do that until I sent a word to him. So thank you for doing that. Let me finish reading that. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with what? One accord. In what? One place. Wow. Look what took place because of that one accord, that one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared to them a of divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each one of them, and they were all, everyone say all. all. It wasn't like, uh, you're a Baptist? No. Nope. Nazarene? No. Nope. Uh, Pentecost? Maybe. Uh, Met everyone say all. all. They were all what? They were all filled. I'm not picking on any denomination. I'm just saying, scripturally, the New Testament Acts 2 church, they were all filled. Somebody say all. I love all the, 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 the unity. You know, we're believing for unity in the church and unity. You know, this, this community worship night has been powerful, you guys. Come unity worship night. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Unity is so beautiful. In the very beginning, you see this picture of unity when God made Adam and Eve. He, it, the Bible says, therefore, when, when he made them and they came together in Genesis 2, 24, therefore a man shall, look, look, at the, look at the beautiful picture of unity. A man shall leave his father and mother and what? Be joined, say that with me, join to his wife, and they shall become one. Everyone say one. One, one flesh. I mean, it's a, a mystery in marriage. A mystery. In, my wife is in Clarkston tonight or Lewiston area at my niece's uh, graduation party. But we are one in flesh. Unified. Unity. God commands a blessing there. That one, the very, the very first word when it comes up, this is the definition of that one, a numeral properly, and it says, look, united. Say that with me, united. united. Wow. If you think that unity is easy, I got news for you. What, what, what do you think? There's divorce constantly because there's an enemy that hates unity. And he wants to attack anything that of the Father when it comes to unity and community. I tell you what, it's very, very challenging. You, I, I want to let you know that you got to work to stay unified. You, you got to stay, you got to work. Unity really happens when you, when you commit to unity. Unity happens uh, when you understand the enemy and that She's not your enemy, but he is your enemy. Did you get that? He's not the enemy. He's the enemy. When you, when you understand who is the, the, the adversary, the opposer of unity, uh, I tell you where unity comes from is when we crucify and die to ourself, we live a life of sacrifice, we commit to walk in unity. It's extremely easy to do that right now when we're sitting in the sanctuary and no one else is talking and we're not doing anything against each other, whatever. I'm telling you, you, you all you got to do is begin to play a sport or work together and you'll find out real quick how easy it is to be disunified. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Just listen to this. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord... Beseech you. That's, that's like begging. He's like, I, 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 I beg you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering. Look, look, bearing one another in love, in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace. I, I think Paul knew how hard it was to keep people in unity. And he, he said, I, I beg you, when you realize the enemy is after unity, I mean, I tell you what, then you understand who the adversary is, but it's still, even 
even being aware of that is very, very difficult to keep unity. You have to, to work at keeping unity. I want you to see the, the power that's in a, a couple, just a, a marriage. This is not all about marriage tonight. I'm going to talk about different uh, parts of unity, but just think about the power. Listen to this scripture right here. It says this, Deuteronomy 32, 30. Think about the couple, thinking about a married couple or even two friends that walk in unity, the power of it. Listen to this scripture. How could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them. There's something so powerful about unity. There, think about a, a draft horse. Will you say that with me for a minute, draft horse? A draft horse, they're extremely big horses. They're, they're very muscular. Uh, they're, they're used by farmers to till and to pull heavy objects. And a typical full-blown um, draft horse, that, that, that draft horse can pull uh, 8,000 pounds. That's a, that's a lot of weight. Eight, that's four tons. One draft horse uh, can pull four tons. Think about that for a minute. Now, get another draft horse yoked with that draft horse and the one draft horse can pull eight tons. I'm, I'm sorry, 8,000 pounds. So you put two uh, uh, draft horses together, yoked together. Think, okay, they pull 1,600 pounds. Has anybody ever worked with draft horses in here before? Just if you have, raise your hand. You've worked with them before. Pretty amazing. You would think... One, 8,000 pounds, two, 16,000 pounds, but that's not how it works. Two draft horses can pull three times the amount. They can pull 24,000 pounds. Amazing. Everyone say unity. 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 Yoke together, pulling together a unit unified unity. Think about that in your marriage. Think about that in a friendship. The power of radical, radical unity. I want to let you listen to the wisest man that's ever walked on the face of the earth other than Jesus. I mean, listen to what this guy says. His name is Solomon. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he who has, for he has no one to uh, help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Two, the power of unity. But I was thinking about this, this area of unity, and it's not just about with a married couple or, or, or two friends. It's in every arena of life when it comes to the enemy trying to disunify us. In every arena. I started thinking about in when it comes to, to, to age, how the, the, the devil wants to keep people separated because of, of, of our age, young or old or middle or youth or young adult. I mean, we got names for all ages from nursery, infant, toddler, middle school, elementary school, high school, young adults, Teenage, think about that for a minute. Paul addresses this, he says this, 1 Timothy 4.12, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believer in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Why? Why would, why would Paul address 
Timothy, a, a young man, and, and let no one despise your youth. Obviously, because he was a youth, maybe somebody was looking down upon him. I know that happened with David. David shows up on the battlefield, and Eliab, Eliab looks down upon him. He's probably 15 years old or so. But it's not just about looking down, listen, upon the youth. We don't want to look down upon the elderly. Karen said, amen. Did y'all hear that? Karen's like, amen, brother, preach that right there. We don't want to despise someone because of their youth. We don't want to despise someone because of their, their elderly or, or middle age or whatever it is. Why do I say that? Because the enemy is always trying to, to divide us, to separate us. Why? Because he knows the power of unity. It's not just in the area of age, but it's also in the area of gender. Separating men and women. And, and yes, absolutely, major difference between men and women. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's always this there's battle and, and trying to, to, to divide and, 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 and bring confusion in the area of gender. Listen to what the Bible says, 1 Peter 3, 7. This is New Living Translation. It says, in the same way, you husbands uh, must give honor to your wives. That's a good thing for every husband in here tonight. Amen? amen. No, no, men, you need to amen that. Amen. amen, men. If you're not married yet, you need to amen it too. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker in that than uh, you are, but she is, your, listen to this, equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. Unity takes two. It begins with you. It begins with the wife. I was directly talking to the husband right there. It begins with the husband. It's not just the wife. It's not just the husband. It's both of you. Amen? Amen. You know, the, the Bible says, wives, submit to your husbands. And I tell you what, if husbands were to play that card all the time, you would be absolutely foolish. Ah, uh, Pastor Downs, submit to me. You, you play that card right there, man. I'm telling you right now. I believe that speaks directly to the wife. And right underneath it, it says this. Husbands, we're to love our wives like Jesus loved the church right? But if every wife plays that card, you're going to just bring, I think you'll bring disunity. Ah, uh, uh, you're supposed to love me like Jesus loved the church. You know what? Hey, you know what? You know how Jesus loved you? He laid down his life for me. You need to lay. And we got to be careful not to play the, those are spoken and written, I think, for the wife to hear and the husband to hear so that we can take heed, operate in that so that we can walk in unity in our marriage. Amen? Honoring cherishing, loving. Yeah, laying down your life for your wife. Wife, honoring. I, I love this old, old school song. Some of you may have heard this before. It goes like this. It takes two to make a thing go right. Da -da. It takes two to make it out of sight. Da -da. Da -da. It takes two to make a thing go right. Da -da. Da -da. It takes two to make it out how many of you remember that? <laughs> it's funny with the, with the heads going like this. I, I, I've been there before. I, I feel you. How about in the area of racial? Do you know how close a person is exactly the same other than their, the, the, the color of their skin. I mean, it's like 99 point something. We're exactly the same. Right. That's right. And then all of a sudden the enemy would do anything That's right. to bring division because of the color of our skin. Can I, can I declare something, Heart of the City Church? Every one of us in this room is colored. Stand up.
we got some different tone right there. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm, you, yeah, you white. <laughs> Here's my point. Every one of us, we're almost exactly the same. The blood of Jesus is red. That makes us all brothers and sisters. Come on. But look, the enemy would come in to try to divide us. Why? Because of the color of our skin. Is that not straight from hell or what? Come on, you got to go with me, church. It's okay to see color. I can see people that black and tan and white and red and all kinds of, that's okay. But don't allow the color of our skin and our culture to divide us because that is straight from hell. The enemy uses the culture. I want to give you five things tonight that, uh, uh, that, 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 I, that I got from, who's the, who's the financial Dave guy? Dave Ramsey. I knew you would <laughs> Accountants right here, they're like, Dave Ramsey in, in one accord. <laughs> Dave Ramsey gave five different uh, areas. It was beautiful. I, I didn't put them in his order because the first one I, I, I put, even though it was one of his, it was one of mine before I read his five. But five areas that will bring disunity. I, I want to read those to, to you tonight that, that we have to... I think commit to. Number one, gossip. Say that with me, gossip. Do you know how bad gossip is? In a heartbeat, we would challenge people if you were up here slamming heroin, doing crack. But for some reason, gossip can just fly under the radar in the church. And gossip will absolutely destroy anything that God is trying to build. Somebody say gossip. Dave Ramsey says, has the power and divide everything you have built. Think about that with the church. Think about that, what he's doing in our life. Think about it in your marriage or your business or whatever. Gossip. Sometimes I feel like we may think it's okay to do. And it is a huge destroyer. I listened to a song the other day. It was, it, it was playing in the gym. And I, I listened to it and I really heard it. And it said this. Can you stop for a minute just because I need to get my tune? <laughs> listen to this. Listen, just listen to the, about the gospel. Just listen to this song. Heard it from a friend who, heard it from a friend who, heard it from another you've been messing around. Did, did you hear that? Heard it from a friend who, heard it from a friend who, Heard it from another, you've been messing around. You can play. I'm like, heard it from a friend, heard it from, heard it from another human. Wow. Can someone say gossip? Gossip is from one place and it's called hell. Like a prophet can come in here and encourage you and build you up and comfort you with the word of the Lord. A Christian can be used just the opposite to destroy and to discomfort you and to tear you down with this thing called gossip. We need to be very, very aware of it. A person can be used by the enemy in a terrible way to pull down to out. And we can fish for gossip. Oh, uh, 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 did, did, did you hear? Did you hear about that? You got to be careful not to fish. You need to cut the line to gossip. Uh, uh, hey, you, we probably need to pray for so-and-so, you know. So, 
Do you hear about so-and-so? Yeah, we need to put him on our prayer list. Bless his heart. Bless her heart. I think we need to absolutely stop comforting and coddling gossip. Be very forthright like we would in adultery or heroin or whatever. I tell you what, we, can we make this a no gossip zone? No gossip zone. No gossip zone. We've already been declaring forever a, a cancer-free zone, huh, Karen? How about a no-gossip zone? Cancer's going to eat you up, you know, physically. Gossip will eat you up mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Number two, unresolved disagreements. I'm just going to hit these real quick. It's a fact. He says this. It's a fact as old as time. When you get a bunch of humans together, no matter their age, education, or sense of humor, What's going to happen? There's going to be disagreements. Be committed to work through unresolved disagreements because it destroys unity. Number three, failure to communicate. Failure to. How about if I set up a meeting with you? Jim, let's meet Friday. Is that okay, Jim? I'll see you there. Okay, you going to be there? Okay. Where are you going to be there at? Yeah, he don't know where because I didn't tell him. No, I didn't communicate. One thing that I find out in a growing church that we have to be clear communicators. I didn't mean to pick on you, Jim. You okay with that? Cool. Everyone say failure to communicate. In every arena, in your family, in the church, we have to be a clear communicating. Here's another one, number four, lack of shared purpose. Lack of shared purpose. Mindy sent out these pictures of everyone in the father's market working 43 hours and all for the single moms outreach and all, you know, seeing Victor and all of them out there working. And I tell you what, they share a common purpose. And it's just like a machine. Why? Because they have a purpose. They, they want to feed the less fortunate. They want to help people in need. They want to clothe people. They, they want to be a blessing. They want to serve. I mean, they have a purpose. We share a common purpose here at Heart of the City Church. And that's why I so want you to write down that Vision Weekend. Make sure you, you, it's coming up in June, Vision Weekend. The, the first weekend of June, it's going to be absolutely, I think, going to be super fun. But we have a vision here, and we like to remind people. It's going to, we're going to have business in the midst of the meeting, but vision. Vision to remember that we're people after God's own heart. Vision to remember that, that I believe that God wants us to reach a tithe of our city. The vision of what Jesus did. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And uh, the, the, the vision that God has for Heart of the City Church. We, have a, we share a common vision. And it's good to, to hit that at our, our vision uh, meeting. The last one is sanctioned incompetence. The way I read that when it comes to the church was simply this. Everyone needs to pull their own weight when it comes to the church. If you're a, if you're a part of the, the body of Christ and you're a, you, if you're a member of the body of Christ, if you're not doing your, your part it affects the entire body of Christ. Are you, are you following that? If, if, if it, listen, if my, if my nerves are not working properly with my fingers, my fingers are not going to work. I need my nerves. Some things that you can see in your body, some things you can't, but you need them all working together. Every person in this room, whatever your peace, whatever you are in the body of Christ, you need to function. If you don't know what that function is, man, get to a city group. Talk 
to a pastor, talk to a leader, figure out what your gifting is. You know, we even have heart school classes that even talks about purpose. I mean, Jim was teaching one and, and uh, JR. And, I mean, you need to find out what your purpose is and operate in it. Why? Because we need you. Each member of the body of Christ connected and growing and equipped and mature and released and functioning. Listen to the scripture out of Ephesians uh, 4, 15 through 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body, say that with me, the whole body, the whole body joined and knit together by whatever joints supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Look what happens when every body part is doing what it's supposed to do. All the joints are connected. Everyone's working together. Look what takes place. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Out of those five, if you remember one of them tonight, for the name of Jesus, remember gossip. I think out of all of those, the most deadly heroin that's laced with every stinking drug out there that will kill the church is gossip. You can listen to all five of them, and be committed to it. But if you just walk away with one tonight, let's all be committed to a gossip-free zone. 